Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome back to another lore video from the wonderful universe of Battletech. Today's video is gonna be one of those obscure elements that few people ever talk about. Thankfully, this was another of the topics recommended to me by a subscriber, so thank you. While there are gonna be a lot of mechs in this episode, I also decided to put the video in the regular Battletech playlist, and not the Battle Mechs one, as some of today's little guys are not even combat units. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the ultra-light mechs of Battletech, or most of them anyway. Since all of these are either 10 or 15 tons and no higher, I will also skip the detail for each one. One final thing I would like to add before proceeding is that not all of these are even canon. Having only appeared only once or twice in an old magazine called Stardate slash Star Drive published by FASA a long time ago. But other than that appearance, some of these guys have never been canonized. All that out of the way, I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of today's less than canon designs is the Apollo. Designed at the end of the 26th and beginning of the 27th century as a substitute for other scout battle mechs, the Apollo was an attempt by House Merrick to save a bit of money. Fortunately, the design was successful, comparing favorably to the much heavier and much more expensive Stinger, although it did lack the jump jets, and so many thousands of Apollos were built. As of 3025, less than 2,000 Apollos are thought to still exist, relegated to rear area house units or mercenaries, and even found in the armies of the Federated Sons and the Draconis Combine. The officially designated APL-1J Apollo carries two medium lasers and a machine gun with one ton of ammo. It does have three tons of armor, which is quite respectable for an ultralight design. Some individual Apollos are also believed to have been equipped with jump jets to alleviate what is perceived to be the design's greatest problem. These refits would only be field modifications, as no official variants of the Apollo exist. The Foxfire The Foxfire is the brainchild of one Carl van der Berg, a tech with Defiance Industries, who had created a design in his spare time and presented the result to the corporate executives. The specialist design was put into production prior to the First Succession War, only for the military to wonder what they should actually do with it and then assigning it to reconnaissance units for its great speed of 142 kph. Later, when incendiary lances were formed, Almost every mech or tank regiment in the Lyran Commonwealth had a lance of Foxfires attached to it. Although it has been out of production for half a century as of 3025, several thousand Foxfires are still thought to be in existence, mostly in the space of the Commonwealth. Although it carries just one Magna Mark I small laser, the Foxfire was primarily designed as an ultra-quick platform for its center torso-mounted Firestorm Flamer. Two and a half tons of armor provide a bit of protection. The Stiletto The Stiletto was designed in the Draconis Combine in response to the Lyran Commonwealth's Commando Battle Mech, but typically it was used only in the role of a light scout. The Stiletto entered production in 2473 and has been in continuous small-scale production ever since. As of 3025, dozens of them are produced annually at Al Shane and Al Nair. Effectively a miniature commando, the stiletto mimics the weapon loadout of that mech, sporting a 4-shot SRM4 and a Magna Mark I small laser. Design number 4 for today is the Slowpoke. The Slowpoke was designed by the third great house to develop an ultralight battle mech, after houses Davion and Kurita. It was House Liao that created the Slowpoke in a response to the appearance of the Federated Sons Junior in the 25th century. A rather unimpressive design due to poor planning and implementation of its conception and manufacture. 
The Slowpoke was built for about two centuries until the factories on Liao were destroyed in the First Succession War. No new Slowpokes were built ever since. It was armed with a single Series Arms medium laser. With a movement profile matching the infamous Urban Mech, its two and a half tons of armor were woefully inadequate, even though they provided near maximum protection for a mech of this size. It was said that Maximilian Liao himself maintained a personal slowpoke called the Humble Warlord, painted in the colors of his house and kept in perfect condition. The fifth design for today, and one that I found maybe the most interesting, is the so-called Ambassador. Now, the Ambassador is an ultralight mech design that is famous for being completely unarmed. Its purpose was exclusively limited to diplomatic representation. When used in this role, the Ambassador offered the reputation associated with a battle mech without any offensive potential. It was very fast at 177 km an hour, possibly even the quickest mech designed at the time, and was more than capable of outrunning any enemy. It also has a decent amount of armor and two jump jets to provide a bit of jumping capacity. The Star League loaned out ambassadors for free to every single dignitary who wanted one, and surprisingly, the concept was a success. Before long, diplomatic negotiations were conducted from ambassadors, with the condition of the mech a matter of pride for the pilot, and it was often demanded that the other side pilot one as well, to demonstrate respect and good faith. At the height of its use, some 300 ambassadors were used throughout the Inner Sphere. Not a lot of these survived beyond the Second Succession War, though. As of 3025, Comstar is rumored to have begun production of them again on Terra at a rate of two per month. It's also said that the First Lord, Michael Cameron of the Star League, liked to travel to Council Sessions in his ambassador, a mech named the Rising Star of Terra. The Junior Another of those less-than-canon mechs, this was also one of the first ultralight battle mechs ever made. Designed in the Federated Suns in the 25th century, and still remaining in use in backwater garrisons, third-line units, and mercenary units as well. It has been in and out of production for centuries now. The original manufacturers sold out to Federated Sons, who then made arrangements with Korean Enterprises to build it. As of 3025, the Junior is built in a small factory on Quentin, with the production hampered by raids from House Kurita. It does remain one of the best armed mechs in this weight class, sporting a reliable combination of one medium laser and two small lasers. Two tons of armor provide minimal protection. Design number 7 for today is the Guardian. Although it is a battle mech by design and not an industrial mech like other security mechs, the Guardian was not built for the military. Instead, it was marketed as a security mech and sold to large corporations and law enforcement agencies. It does have a relatively small size and low weight, allowing it to go where other bigger mechs cannot giving it a somewhat better mobility in an urban environment. However, its relatively slow speed of 64 km an hour means that many other mechs can run it down. It is armed with five machine guns, one in each arm, in each side torso, and in the center torso respectively. Two and a half tons of ammo in the right torso provide an ample supply. In a frequent refit, the Guardian drops half a ton of ammo to replace one of the machine guns with a medium laser, giving it at least a marginal chance to stand up to another battle mech. The next of the designs for today is the ominously named Prey Seeker. Manufactured by Akernar Battle Mechs on Cahokia, the Prey Seeker was designed to be a high-speed scout and raider. While its mission profile speaks to mech warriors who feel marginalized by the growth of combined arms warfare, the unusual construction of the arms and the phenomenal speed that the mech can reach are comparable to the Dasher Omnimech of the clans, first seen during the Inner Sphere in the clan invasion. K-1 
capable of running at a staggering 194 kilometers an hour thanks to the extra light but extra expensive Magna 180XXL engine, the prey seeker takes a minimalist approach to equipment to pay for that speed. Mounting a small cockpit and an XL gyro, the prey seeker mounts 3.5 tons of armor and lacks any jump jets. It mounts a couple of medium re-engineered lasers for defense. And it is not a brawler. But its uncommon weapons do offer an advantage against opponents with advanced armor types, such as hardened armor, ferrolamellor, and reflective armor. Finally, the ninth and last design of today is the Roadrunner, also known as the Emerald Harrier. Originally conceived by the clan Jade Falcon during the clan's golden century, the Emerald Harrier is a 15-ton mech. It was out of production by the time of the clan invasion in the Inner Sphere, and only rarely deployed even there. Comstar ROM operatives gave it the reporting name of the RD-1R Roadrunner, when they first observed it in the Jade Falcon occupation zone. It was last reported with Erie units on Coventry in 3058, and believed to have been built as a training mech. The design faded into obscurity until it resurfaced in 3112, when the Republic of the Sphere inaugurated the Roadrunner factory on Capola. Clan Seafox had sold the design specs to the Republic, along with an agreement to provide technical support for the design. Thus, the Roadrunner was the first completely Clantech design produced in the Inner Sphere. It was used extensively by the Republic particularly as a recon unit, although the design had been purchased both for training mech warriors and to delve into the secrets of producing clan technology. One of its most notable use was during the Senate Rebellion in 3135 on Terra. During the brief conflict on the world, Roadrunners in service of pro-Republic units were used to track down Senate-aligned units. It was noted that visually the Roadrunner bears a vague resemblance to the Timberwolf with the leg assembly of the Viper, also known as the Dragonfly. It is equipped with a massive engine and a 15-ton frame. This allows it to reach a ridiculous top speed of 210 km an hour, which is more than enough for recon and cavalry tactics. Each arm has a single ER medium laser, allowing it to remain away from supply bases and making it a good deep raider. Its main drawback is the limited armor. At only 1.5 tons of ferrofibrous, it means that any location can be breached by just one well-placed missile. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these ultralight battle mechs of Battletech for today. Like I said in the beginning, not all of these are canon, especially the Apollo, the Junior and the Stiletto. Still, some of these are still probably useful in their own respective roles, and I dare say more useful than the bizarrely looking Protomex I've covered so recently. But maybe that's just me. What about you? What are your thoughts on these ultralight designs? Is any of them among your favorites? Which one did you find the most interesting and why? Do share your thoughts in the comments below if you want. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks for watching to the end and I wish you an awesome and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.